We are, of course, within the busy holiday shopping season, and if you don't have the inventory on your shelf already, well, is it too late? At one point, you guys remember, there was a backlog of, well, ships within the 80s, right, waiting for space at the port of Long Beach, which is the second busiest port in North America. Let's get an update now from Mario Cordero, Executive Director for the Port of Long Beach. It is always great to have you on this program. Thank you so much. Talk to us about the backlog and, well, the number of ships that you see outside your window. Well, thank you, Taylor, for the kind invitation. As you referenced, at one point we had 86 vessels at anchor here in the San Pedro Bay complex, which includes Long Beach and Los Angeles. And I'm happy to report that uh, today, uh, at least per last night's report, that number's down to 48. Uh, so that number is, uh, again, another metric of improvement and progress. So while we still have, obviously, disruption in the global supply chain, the good news is we're starting to see some improvement with regard to some of the bottleneck questions that uh, we were confronted or have been confronted with uh, as a result of the COVID-19 outbreak. What is it typically this time of year? Well, you know, in a normal situation, we wouldn't have any vessels at anchor. Yeah. You know, as you know, this is the nation's largest port complex, and the men and women who work on the docks have been absolutely uh, uh, unparalleled with regard to their ethic in terms of continuing to move this commerce or this cargo. So, again, in a normal situation, we wouldn't have vessels at anchor. Uh, this year, yeah. the port complex, we are now set to move in excess of TE 20 uh, million containers, TEU containers. That's the number of Long Beach, Los Angeles together. Together. That's a historic number. So again, we also have to recognize that in terms of moving cargo, uh, we've been able to do it at a very historic pace. And, and again, the numbers show that. But obviously, there's still a lot of work to do to get back to some normalcy here. There's been some concern, though, that we're just shifting around the optics, that it, things may not be improving. It's just looking like it because of the declining speed of inbound cargo and that those are anchored off out of the area that we're tracking. Can you you comment on that? Well, number one, I think, again, as I referenced, from the global supply chain perspective, there, there seems to be improvement now. Now, in terms of the vessels who are now leaving Asia, more specifically China, at reduced speeds, uh, that's correct. Given the reduction of the speed, we'll have a slower pace of vessels arriving here and getting on the, what they call on the queue, waiting in line to get into the, to the port complex. But on the other hand, we are seeing, again, improvement with regard to the global uh, so, uh, supply distribution. So uh, we're, we're not out of this yet, but I think there is light at the end of the tunnel. And last, I'll say we will continue to have a, a, a look here in terms of the trajectory of the virus. You know, we're now talking about the Omicron and what impact that may be, because, again, if we have a repetition of what we experienced earlier this year and late mm. December uh, 2020, I'm talking about the surge of the COVID-19 virus, then, of course, that definitely impacts the uh, supply chain. And, Again, right. this sector is not immune to that. Before we get to that virus, though, you talked about a light at the end of the tunnel. Is that a normal or a new normal? And do you see that in the first or the second half of next year? Well, it's, it's, it's going to be the new normal in terms of the amount of containers that you're going to be uh, seeing here going through this complex. I mean, that 20 million number is not going to get reduced even after the crisis. Uh, the good news with regard to this, the trajectory of the consumer demand is continues to be in an upward swing. Household spending, according to the latest figures in the Labor Department, went up uh, here at 1.3 percent month to month. And of course, the consumer spending uh, continues to go up in, on a month to month basis and went up 2.3 percent. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, there is a lot of consumer demand, which is good news for our economy. And on the other hand, in terms of the progress I'm seeing, uh, obviously the containers that were at our terminals, and particularly the empty containers that were dwelling there, because of the initiatives of, of the White House, and specifically uh, White House uh, envoy Picari, John Picari, we've been able to get the stakeholders to move this cargo at a pace of reducing empty container dwell here uh, at, at, at a pace of 30 percent. So uh, that's good news. News, and that's why it gives me optimism that uh, hopefully after we uh, the, the beginning of the new year we'll start seeing continued progress. Mario, when we were lucky enough to be with you at the Port of Long Beach back in October, they just brought in the 24-7 hours at the ports from the Biden administration's behest. Has that in any way alleviated some of the problem? How has the working with the rest of the infrastructure, the truckers and the like, has that helped? Has that been made more efficient in some way? 
great question because that, in my opinion, is a framework of what we need to do in the supply chain. And that is a transition of a 24 seven framework. Uh, now the good news that has happened since uh, when you visited here, uh, we have now a carrier with ownership interest in the Port of Los Angeles, who now has announced that the, I'm speaking of CMA CGM, that their terminal, they're gonna move to 24 seven. So obviously, again, the vibrant discussion and the robust discussion about how we transition this supply chain, given the volume that we have today and the volume that we're going to have tomorrow. I mean, so I think that's good news in terms of how this crisis has given the opportunity for us to think out of the box and look at these extended gate hours. All right. And Mario, we have to ask you, of course, about, I guess, the latest wrinkle in that crisis. We, of course, we thought we were potentially on the tail end of the COVID crisis, the Omicron variant, obviously causing some concerns here. How are you preparing your folks on the ground there uh, for the current situation, at least as we know it to be. And are there any concerns here that some of the progress that you've made in clearing this backlog could be set back? Well, number one, we've made tremendous progress in terms of the availability of PPEs, medical supplies that come to this complex. Obviously, when we look in terms of uh, a year ago, and particularly in the spring of 2020, uh, as a nation, we were not prepared with regard to what we needed to do uh, to address the medical supply issue, ventilators, PPEs. I can represent to you that it's much different now. So in terms of having the not only the protocols, but the equipment, the PPE equipment that's required to have uh, for our, 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 our hospitals and, and, and uh and so forth, uh, we're much better prepared in that scenario. In terms of where the trajectory of the COVID, uh, particularly the Omicron and the Delta variant, uh, again, the good news is early on this year, we had a full court press here in Southern California with the support of our mayor, or both mayors, Garcetti and Garcia, respectively, LA Long Beach, and our governor to vaccinate our workforce here on the dock. So from that perspective, uh, we are better prepared to deal with a worse scenario as opposed to where we were a year ago.